Hi, I'm Rod from Volume 2 and I'm here to do a tutorial on how I use MIDI on my live performances so you can learn both how to use the Party T500 to control your DAW and vice versa. So let's start by looking at what you'll need, what gear and what connections you'll need to uh, use MIDI with your Party T500. You'll obviously need an HT500 or an HT500X though this also works with other models such as the X3. You'll also need a USB MIDI interface within and out ports in a DAW, a digital audio workstation. I'm using a Steinberg UR44 as my MIDI interface and Cubase AI7 as my DAW. First you'll need to connect your pods out to your interfaces in and the in to the out, so you'll have communication on both directions. Press and hold the move button to enter the MIDI assigned screen on your pod. Here you can see all your foot switches and expression pedals. You can add MIDI messages to any of them. In my case, I've programmed the first three foot switches so that Cubase will perform play, stop and skip a track. The type of message and value you program are irrelevant as long as you don't repeat them from one button to the other. So on foot switch 1 I've got channel bass, message CC, CC7 and value 127. On foot switch 2, I've got the same thing but CC set on 2, and on foot switch 3, I've got CC on 4. Again, the message and value are irrelevant as long as you don't repeat them. Now, go on Cubase, and the first thing you'll need to do is go on your device manager and make sure that your remote device is set to your specific MIDI interface. Then choose whatever command or function you need hit learn and press the pod's foot switch you wish to assign that command. Repeat with all the other foot switches you need to assign a function to. So now whenever I hit foot switch 1 Cubase will play, there you go, foot switch 2 stops and 3 skips the next marker or song. You can assign MIDI commands or functions to any button on the pod but remember that the pod will always send MIDI message but also toggle on or off whatever effects is associated with that specific foot switch. There might not be an effect on that foot switch but if there is it will work as usual. And now for the complicated but interesting and useful part. How to control your pod from your DAW. This is really cool because it's like you've got your own personal guitar tech controlling everything and all that's left is for you to do your own thing, walk around on stage and really get into your zone and concentrate on just that, not on the usual tap dancing that you need to go through. First you need to go on your pod's user manual and look for this chart. This chart tells you what MIDI message will control which button or pedal on your pod. CC1 controls expression pedal 1, CC53 controls foot switch 3 on or off, CC54 uh, controls foot switch 4 and so on. Be aware that programming will need to be slightly different depending on how your pod's foot switches are set to work whether as individual stomp boxes from 1 through 8 or from 1 through 4 in presets A, B, C, D but I'll explain you how to program your MIDI track for either case. It's very similar and easy. The next, step, the next step is to create a MIDI track. I've got mine already set, so I'll just open it and um, I've already got some lanes which uh, I've assigned with a specific MIDI message or command. So program change for preset changes. I've got one uh, for CC4, so it can toggle on and off the effects assigned to foot switch 4 on my pod, because I've got some presets on which I need the effects on that button to go on or off. Uh, CC1 to control my expression pedal 1, and whatever is assigned to it, volume, wah, pitch, whatever. And CC53 to control foot switch 3, again, for the same reason as with CC54 and foot switch 4. So now uh, just select your pencil tool and let's say you want to raise your volume which is set to expression pedal 1 and you just draw a line like this or just click where on the, here at the top and so when Cubase gets to this point it'll just make your volume hit its maximum value 
and you would um, as you would with your foot on the pedal without you actually having to do anything. If you want to program a preset change it's very simple. All you gotta do is go on your program change lane and write the value associated with whatever preset you need. So just be aware that value 0 equals to preset A on bank 1. So if you want preset B that equals to value 1, preset C value 2, preset D value 3 and so on. If you want preset A on bank 2 then all you just all, all you need to do is just continue counting until you go like um, preset D is value 3, value 4 will change to bank 2 and it's preset A. You can see the value here on this side so look for value 4, you go, write it, and when it gets this point, it'll automatically change the preset to preset A on bank 2. You can also change the pod set list, um, just create a media lane with cc0 commands, which command bank to change, and again, remember that set list 1 equals to value 0, and so on. So let me show you an example on my MIDI track where Cubase will change the preset for me and then control the expression, pen, the expression pedal 1 which I've associated to the pitch shifter on my pod. So that'll change uh, the octave while I'm playing my solo, all automatically. Okay, here we go. One preset. Changed. Pitch shifting. Going up. And I change it back to the first preset. So, um, whenever your programming changes to your expression pedal, the value will vary between 0 and 127, from minimum to maximum. When you're programming a preset change, remember that value 0 equals to preset A on bank 1, and just go up from there. But, when programming MIDI um, lanes to toggle on or off a specific foot switch, like 3 or 4, like I have here, it'll make absolutely no difference what value you write on your MIDI track. The only thing that matters is that it's a different value from the one before. It can be here, there, whatever, it doesn't matter. Every time it gets to a different value, it will toggle on or off that effects on that specific foot switch. On, off, on, off. And that's basically it. Don't forget to save all your presets on your um, pod and all your programming on your MIDI track and test everything before you use it live, of course, so you'll be certain that it'll go as planned. This, of course, means that you and your band will have to play along a click track coming on uh, your in-ear monitors so everything happens at the right time, which is uh, how we do uh, live. So there you go, this is um, pretty much it. This will bring you tremendous stage freedom and open a lot of possibilities that would otherwise be impossible. You just need to be creative. So let me know in the comments below if this tutorial was clear enough and I'll try to help you out on any doubts or problems you might find. Thanks for watching, thank you Line6 and rock on!